Hello and greetings from Iceland. Two days ahead is all about the Reykjanes Peninsula, where things have been shaky recently. Once again, not shaky enough though to be on high alert, but I do have some new information that I need to share with you, and a new earthquake location as well. And from there, I will be taking you on a sightseeing tour based on the earthquake map, showing off some more of the impressive parts of the plate boundaries, meaning that this video turned out to be a bit longer than I expected at first. So I'm starting with some of the most recent news for those of you who can't wait. But one of our fine professors from the university made a statement last week that came as a bit of a surprise. He stated that the Reykjanes Peninsula was indeed ready for the next eruption. And uh, we could get such an event any time now, but we would of course get some warnings first, or just like before the last two eruptions. And uh, this statement was a surprise, due to how relatively little seismic activity has been there in the recent months. Two days later, after his statement, the meteorological office made its own statement, claiming that uh, it's nothing indicating that uh, we might be moving into the next eruption. They don't expect an eruption there until one, two years. So this is not making things simpler for me. So uh, my feeling is that uh, the professor is referring to the recent unrest by the tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula. His statement was made shortly after the earthquake swarm started just last week, then faded out and started again yesterday. And according to him, those deep earthquakes have to do with magma on the move. So let's go a bit back in time now, to February 2020. Land uplift was confirmed just a few kilometers from where we have those earthquakes now. And shortly thereafter we got two magma intrusions by Grindavik. And then we got another set of magma intrusions around there before the eruptions in 2022 and 23. But both of them would eventually come up a bit further east though. And this unrest on the sea floor around there is something that we have witnessed before. And the question that popped up in my mind was, uh, is there some sort uh, of channel there that might be feeding some of the systems on the peninsula? So it seems to me that the professor is interpreting those movements as uh, the eve of a new eruption. That's the only conclusion that I can uh, come to, although there are some doubts amongst uh, other scientists. But uh, that's just how it is. It uh, is the uncertainty that most likely got them interested in geology, just like uh, many of us uh, volcano nerds on the channel. And uh, I do uh, lean toward the theory that uh, the peninsula is more or less ready. And uh, feel free to place your bets in the comment section. And uh, to help you, I made a short time lapse covering the last 30 days. And this is how the earthquakes have been accumulating day by day. And the earthquakes have been spreading out the last 24 hours. And since I won't be able to upload this uh, just now tonight, Wednesday, there might even be some changes. And I have actually covered this part of the Reykjanes Peninsula quite well in my last videos. But as for my new subscribers, I'm going to show you the location. And when I place the drone here facing this direction, this is a rift zone or from a coastline where we have remains from the 13th century eruption that uh, provided the canets with this uh, popular rock out there called uh, Elde or Fire Island. And uh, an eruption around here could even migrate uh, onshore like uh, the 13th century eruption did. And this land is one of the most fractured and burned piece of land here in Iceland. So under normal circumstances, it would be nothing much to lose. However, there is a power plant there and this is not a blue lagoon, and we have also a fish farm there, and they are planning to build another such fish farm, extremely large, and it doesn't look as a good idea to me, or just about where the 13th century eruption came up. Massive infrastructure built up around there is uh, clearly a man-made problem, since uh, the designers can read the geology reports and the history, just like me. But when we look at the larger map, it's good to see that things look better for the fishery town of Grindavik now. The magma intrusion last year looked awful for a while. And as for Mount Paradalsfjall, where the two eruptions took place, it's nothing happening there now. 
even the magma dike that fed the eruptions, there are hardly any earthquakes there. But there is still unrest on the so-called Krisuvik volcanic system. That system has clearly been getting ready for something for a long time now. And notice the volcanic ridges. This is what is so fascinating about the plate boundaries or all this extreme landscape. And while tourists went through uh, huge problems to get to the highlands to see landscape like this, we had this uh, all the time in our backyard. And uh, before we leave this area, I'm facing Mount Faradalsfjall now. And uh, this was shot 30 minutes before the eruption came up last year. While I was sitting in my car with the drone remote, and my car was shaking every few minutes from earthquakes. So I had my drone there hovering for like 15 minutes in uh, tripod mode, and I was trying to see if uh, it could detect the ground to move as the earthquakes were going on. But uh, it was not enough for that, and I did feel a bit uncomfortable up there, waiting for the eruption. But I drove 500 kilometers the day before to capture some of the first photos from there, and the eruption finally came up while I was driving back from this place. So I took off directly to Grindavík to shoot this from another angle, and managed to upload some of the first videos from there. But uh, this was just a detour, so back to the map. But it is in this area where we have something new going on, or by the volcano Hengill. So I'm going to swap to Google Fly Mode for a while from this location here, and uh, swap to drone footage from there. But earthquakes are common in Hengill and the surrounding area in the years uh, 1994 to 99. About 25,000 earthquakes were detected in this volcano peaking with a magnitude 5 in 1998. Land uplift was also detected during those years, and it seems that the reason was the inflow of magma into the magma chamber of uh, Hrómundar Tindur, or this uh, good, solid name for an Icelandic volcano. And this looked a bit nasty for a while, since uh, we are so close by the city, but this development stopped in 1999. However, the seismic activity seems to be escalating slowly in Romander Tintur now. The chemical composition of the magma there is the same as from Hengill, so it's the same system. There is still lava close to the surface, evidenced by the steaming fumaroles, and due to the fact that this volcano is still very much alive, I do always notice uh, the unusual earthquakes there. But I'm not trying to tell you that we are heading into something nasty there. This uh, is, however, just a part of the story of the Reykjanes Peninsula. And uh, again, we have important infrastructure in those uh, hot places, like two geothermal power plants by uh, Mount Hengill that supply Reykjavik with most of the hot water and energy we need. And uh, when I place my drone here, overlooking the uh, fissure swarm, we see how enormous it is since it runs through like uh, Thingvallavatn as well. So let's move there. The name Thingvallir means uh, assembly plains, and uh, this place symbolizes the history of Iceland. In fact, uh, our most sacred place, the Althingi, Iceland's parliament, was founded here in the year 930, making it the oldest operating parliament globally. And the assembly plains sit on this uh, depression valley, and looking further, we see the shield volcano Skjaldbreiður, and while Skjaldbreiður was in the making 9,000 years ago, it might have led to this uh, depression in the land. So I have to tell you about this very common misunderstanding that you can find in almost all tourist brochures about Iceland. Thingvellir has often been sold as the best part to see the plate boundaries, but it is only a kind of a simplified version for the tourists, because uh, we do have our own plate that kind of uh, split up from the continental plates. So this is the American plate, and this is our own private plate. And uh, this is, of course, a fantastic place to demonstrate the plate tectonic theory. But as for me, this is more of uh, perhaps the most impressive uh, depression valley in the world. And the tectonic plates are just uh, this extra feature or uh, that's how I would describe this. And the land subsided like 40 meters in a period of 9,000 years. But that's not the whole story since uh, during 10 day earthquake swarm in 1789, this valley would drop like two, three meters more. 
and uh, furthermore changes in fractures were detected here in 1990 so scientists did some calculations and confirmed uh, 10 centimeters drop over a 20 year period and this was a rather big news in 1990 or uh, enough reason to get the civil defense involved where the question was raised whether this could be a sign of a larger earthquake in the South Iceland fracture zone and uh, that earthquake occurred 10 years later but uh, it's best not to draw any conclusions from this that was an earthquake we expected anyway and I have never heard about any connection between this valley and the South Iceland fracture zone but this leaves us with uh, one solid fact though like uh, we do not need earthquakes to cause the land to subside and it will be one of my tasks soon to get more uh, recent information about the movements there like GPS data and when I get that information I'm going to use them in a video that I've had in the making for some time now. I shot all the footage I needed for it last year and it covers uh, all the volcanoes around the city. Quite a large video, it's plenty to choose from. And uh, it will also be a good practice or this stepping stone from uh, vlogging like this into uh, full length documentaries like I've been planning. This video about the volcanoes around the city will be coming soon. It was very interesting to shoot the footage for it. So let's move from the tourist uh, plate boundaries around here and uh, check out some of the features on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And some of them are actually way more impressing for me, like here, where we see the mid-Atlantic ridge emerge from the seafloor, close by the so-called bridge between continents, or where the earthquakes are now. And uh, this place is way more of a symbol for the plate boundaries for me, and it could also be a symbol for the things to come, or a submarine eruption. This unrest now could just be some noise from the magma highway, perhaps some pumping going on, or the countdown to the next eruption. So I have the feeling that uh, if the professor is right, this magma is going somewhere, then we might get some indications from the seismometers in the next days. So it will be very interesting to see where this is leading us, since we are into this uh, long chapter of unrest, and uh, what we got so far is just uh, a tiny sample, just telling us that it's uh, way more to come. But when, we just might know it soon. And with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.